Welcome to the weekly video compilation that covers a wide range of issues relevant to relationships, family, and personal development. So whether you're thinking about friendship or just curious about your own conduct, this vid is for you. Sit back, relax, and join us on this trip as we learn more about ourselves and the world around us. Remember to like and subscribe. Men, what's the most creepiest thing a woman has ever done to you? Story 1. I have told this before. Little after I turned 21, I was at the bar with some friends, shooting pool, enjoying a beer. This group of rough-looking 45-plus-year-old women come in. They slowly make their way over to the same side of the bar. We keep minding our business and having fun. I'm standing at the end of the table when I feel a hand slide down my, the back of my pants and boxers and grab my butt. Then she screeched out loud, Boy, your mama raised you right, then walks back to her friends all proud. The bartender kicked them out shortly after. My buddies were cool, they don't give me crap about it. We're all just like, what the F? I have never groped some random person like that. I'm sorry to all women who get groped like that. It completely catches you off guard. It's meant to be a compliment, but it just makes you feel used and revolting. Absolutely, 100%. I have had something uh, similar happen to me, not down the back of my pants, thankfully, but uh, I was doing a, uh, a dinner theater play where we interacted with the audience, and yeah, no, it, it feels awful. Don't just grope and touch random people that you don't know. It's not a compliment. It's icky. Story two. Keep in mind, I'm only a junior in high school. I was about in 7th or 8th grade, and I was at a New Year's party at my grandparents' house with all of their friends. You can tell I'm a party animal spending my New Year's with 60- and 70-year-olds. And one of their friends, who I'd known for a while, continued touching me and grabbing me in my waist and thigh region. She would sneak it in, like, under the table or walking past each other or whatever. I totally understand the stereotypical grandma cheek pinch or whatever, but this was something else. After squeezing my butt with both hands, I had enough and said something to her. The rest of the night was super awkward, but the worst part was my grandma was defending her and downplaying the whole situation. It wasn't until I told my mom the next day and she lost her crap on my grandma that she finally admitted she was wrong, and I haven't seen her since. Yeah, I'm sorry, I know. The older generation, they do have a thing where it's like, oh, just touching people and stuff is, you know, it's okay to them. And... I don't know. Within your own family, if there are understandings, if you're comfortable with stuff, fine. But as a kid, if you express that you're not comfortable with something, don't do it. But this is like crossing that line where there shouldn't a kid shouldn't even have to say something. A kid shouldn't have to say like, no, I, I don't like you grabbing my butt with both hands, old lady, I say as a seventh or eighth grader. That should never have to be brought up as a line. It's a very clear line, and it's gross. Story 3. Probably not as exciting as most here, but still super weird. I was staying at my friend's house, sleeping in his guest room. Friend is at work, his girlfriend is at home. One thing about this room is that it has a very heavy door that has to be held open by something super heavy, or else it slams shut. Well, I sleep with the door closed. I woke up in the morning, as I do every morning. I laid there for a bit longer before actually getting out of bed. Well, this time, of all of a sudden, I hear the door open. The light is still off, but the hallway light being on means I can see if someone's standing in the doorway. I have my eyes kind of open, and I can see that she's just standing there in the doorway, staring at me. I didn't move. I wanted to see what the heck would happen, because this was thoroughly freaking me out. She just stood there. For at least ten minutes. Didn't look away, didn't walk around the room. I was just laying at a weird angle where I could see her perfectly, she could see me, but she couldn't see that my eyes were half open. I thought she may have been in there to grab something because there's a bunch of stuff in the closet, clothes and such. Uh, nope. Ten minutes I waited for her to do something or to walk out. Finally, I flinched and feigned waking up and I heard her run out and the door slam. I got up, went into the kitchen, and she was as bubbly as could be, acting like nothing happened. Acting like she didn't just spend ten minutes watching me sleep. Is your buddy's girlfriend a cat? I'm not joking. After, like, a couple minutes or something, I would have probably called this person out and just been like, Are you just gonna watch me? What's happening right now? Like, I'm sorry, call that person out. That's... <laughs> that's, like, scary. <laughs> 
Story 4. I had an ex-girlfriend stalk me for five years. I had a restraining order against her that included my grandparents, she had been bothering them, and my parents, but I didn't think to include my sister because she lived in a different city. This woman stalked my sister and ended up approaching her at a music festival. She was wearing, this is so insane, one of those hats that has fake dreadlocks attached to it, and she was trying to pretend to be a stranger and get information from my sister. Now keep in mind, one, she was white, two, that was the only thing she did to disguise herself, and three, my sister knew her already. It would be hilarious if not for the years of harassment and inconvenience she caused me. Every time I would move, she would send me something in the mail to let me know she had my address. One time, it was a box uh, with a flannel shirt, a half-empty bottle of cologne, a broken toy axe, a bunch of pubic hair, and an 11-page letter written in crayon. She was crazy. Story 5. Met a girl at a bar and we ended up back at her place. We messed around and fell asleep. She seemed normal all night, and I saw no red flags at all. I definitely would have dated her again, until she went crazy. I woke up around 5 a.m. and started getting dressed to leave. I had to get home and get ready for work. She woke up while I was dressing and totally freaked out. She was screaming angrily, You can't leave! I explained I needed to go to work and that I'd call her later. She was having none of that. Then, she attacked. I literally had to physically fight my way out of her apartment with a few scratches on my arm for souvenirs. I have no idea what her deal was, and I never went back to the bar I met her in. Story 6. Hooked up with a girl in a nightclub. We went back to my place. She was being really weird on the walk over there, but I thought nothing of it because I was really drunk. Only realized she was being weird when thought about it later. We get back to my place and messed around and I fell asleep. My roommate was woken up by noises from downstairs. He got up, opened his door, and yelled down the stairs, Hello? Hookup appears at the foot of the stairs with wet hair and wearing only a towel. Where is everyone? What do you mean? Hookup walks up the stairs, straight past my roommate and into his room while looking around. Everyone is gone. Where are they? Where is he? Roommate. What are you talking about? Are you looking for OP? I'll show you to his room. Roommate walks hook up back down the stairs and shows her to my room. She went into my room and that was it. Or so my roommate thought. He went back to bed, but he couldn't sleep thinking about the encounter. Then he remembered all the loud noises and decided he should check that everything was okay downstairs in the living room. He goes downstairs, checks the living room, nothing out of the ordinary, checks the kitchen, all good, and then he checks the bathroom, and what he found was chaos. The bathroom was flooded with water at least three inches high, according to my roommate, he might be exaggerating. The door for our shower was torn off, there was a towel in the toilet, and the entire bathroom was littered with all our toiletries. She'd also clearly used my roommate's razor, although I failed to understand where, because as I remember, she was shaved all over. Anyway, my roommate freaked out thinking about water damage and spent over an hour cleaning and drying up the bathroom at 4am. Needless to say, he's given me some crap about it. The girl was gone when I woke up the next morning. Haven't seen her since. Oh yeah, she also gave me chlamydia. Fun times. I mean, I don't really know what to think. Maybe she had taken some drugs. Maybe she had uh, some uh, mental health issues or something like that. I don't know, but uh, that's definitely a little bit worrying. And I'm glad that it was just a bathroom that was damaged and uh, nothing else. Well, I guess you got chlamydia, so I... <laughs> Sorry, I guess it wasn't uh, no collateral damage, but you go and get some chlamydia be gone. You're fine, right? I hope so. Story 7. Woman I was engaged to doing all the prep for the wedding. This was in her country, and I didn't understand the language all that well, so I was a bit limited on how much I could help her out other than helping to cut the invite cards out, etc. She was a very hot-tempered person, as she was, but as much as I asked her what tasks I could help out with, she just refused to involve me in anything at all and then complained that I wasn't helping enough. She argued and argued with me about how I didn't care, despite my efforts to be involved in all the prep. It was all very manipulative. Eventually, she actually pulled a knife out at me. I slapped it off her wrist, and she stormed off. When she left for work the next day, I packed my bags, took a taxi to the airport, and noped out of there.
Story 8. I was probably 9. It was after church service and there's this new lady there who took a liking to me. She was the new wife of the minister. We were outside waiting for the grown-ups to come out. I think they were having a meeting inside. And this new lady took me to a bench nearby. We sat, asked me a lot of questions. Then she put my head on her lap, stroked my hair while humming a lullaby like I'm a baby. It felt really uncomfortable and I really wanted to escape, but I was a shy little boy and didn't want to offend her or something. Saw my sister from afar snickering at us. It went on for like 30 minutes, but felt like hours. I was dying with cringe inside. Story 9. Met a girl at a party. We flirted, then ended up in my bedroom. This was in my apartment. Heavy makeout. I suggest taking it further. She declines. Heavier making out, basically including anything that's not intercourse. I suggest taking it further again. She declines. Fair enough. We stop making out and plan to see each other again. The day we were supposed to meet, she stood me up. I had cooked and it was already time to meet. She told me that she doesn't want to see me again because I wasn't pushy enough. She likes men who are less soft and gentle. She basically told me that when she said no, I shouldn't have listened. Dodged a bullet there. Good on you. Extremely, extremely good on you for not being that pushy. Like, uh, look, I understand people can have these sort of, you know, kinks or whatever, where it's like they like someone, but... That requires trust and communication. You can't just expect a stranger to do stuff like that. That's not great. So you made the right call. Story 10. My one and only Tinder date. Turns out she had signed her divorce papers that day. On the day, she laid out her one-year plan for us to date and get married. Let her know I wasn't interested in a second date. She thanked me for my opinion and declined to not having a second date. Very luckily, I hadn't been able to meet her at my home at the start of the date, like she'd suggested, and we had to meet someplace neutral. I don't like to think what would have happened if she had known where I lived. Considering that I'm not attractive or rich or otherwise someone women are usually interested in, this was a very weird situation. It was just a, hi, I don't know anything about you, but we're going to be married by the end of the year. No, your opinion isn't relevant. Story 11. Wearing my university sports jacket when I went to grab a fast food order. Some woman I've never seen before shouted hi and waved at me like we were best friends. Gave an awkward, confused wave back and left with my food. A couple hours later, I got a friend request on Facebook from someone I recognized as her. Best guess is she saw my jacket and stalked the sports roster to find my name and added me from that. Got blocked real quick. That, or on a first date, she asked, if you were going to kill me, how would you do it? I know how I would kill you. Then proceeded to tell me her plan on how she would kill me and get away with it. Teachers, how did a student get expelled on the first day of school? Story one. A guy went absolutely insane on the first day of school. The campus for our school is large. Instead of building multiple floors, they just sprawled outward. In total, we had four buildings. The story starts in the building furthest away from the main building. This kid stood up from his desk in the first period and started yelling profanities at the kid next to him. <clears throat> he was yelling so loud that people in other classrooms could hear him. The teacher tried to get him to calm down and stop yelling. The kid was having none of it and punched the teacher in the face and ran out of the classroom. Now he was loose in the building. He started banging on doors, most teachers lock their doors, and screaming profanities as he ran. He eventually found an unlocked door and went in. Nobody was in the room at the time, thankfully. He threw desks and chairs around, he tore things off the wall and managed to rip the whiteboard off the wall. After that, he left that building and went to the next. He continued banging on the door while screaming. The school resource officer was in that building and tried to stop the kid. The kid headbutted the officer so hard in the face that the officer almost blacked out. He got out of that building, but not before breaking a window. He moved into the next building. He somehow got worse in the time between buildings. He was actively trying to find people to hurt. A couple people were out in the hall when he walked in and he went after them. He grabbed the guy by the arm and knocked him to the ground and started kicking him in the face and chest. The other student tried to run away, but the kid grabbed her by her hair and knocked her to the floor too. She only received one kick to the stomach before the kid was moving again. He found another unlocked classroom and tore it apart. Then he stumbled into the computer room. He smashed every screen and threw all the modems into a pile in the middle of the room and peed on them. 
He finally made his way to the main building and was stopped by the officers waiting for him there. It took four grown men to get him on the floor. It was one of the scariest times in my school. The people he attacked were all right. They were all seen by an EMT or taken to the hospital. He ended up in a mental health facility and has since gotten better. I'm honestly pretty glad to hear that this person got, you know, brought somewhere for treatment because as I was reading this, this was like, this doesn't sound like someone just kind of rebelling. This sounds like someone who needs some serious help and I'm glad he got it and I'm glad that everyone ended up okay because, I mean, if they didn't, I don't know if he would have gotten, you know, the help that he needed instead of just getting shipped off to juvie or something, so... <sighs> Story two. I've been a seventh grade teacher for about 30 years now. This specific story happened back in about 1997. Something else important to the story is the fact that the school I teach at is in a fairly rich part of the city, so kids often have a decent amount of cash on them. Around this time, many people didn't have great internet connections, so people would look at erotic images using magazines or VHS tapes. Well, middle school boys are rather hormonal, and many of them didn't have access to these magazines or VHS tapes. It was the first day of school after summer break, and one of my students was trying to make a little bit of extra money, I guess. He had stolen his dad's magazines and VHS tapes and was selling them to many other students for $5 apiece. He actually managed to secretly do this for almost the entire day. If I remember correctly, he made about $200 off magazines and VHS tapes, which to a 7th grader is pretty much the same as being a millionaire. He probably would have managed to get away with it, but he ended up getting cocky and began to brag to his friends about how he was rich. I guess he ended up telling the wrong person who told the principal. The kid was called down to the office later that day during the last period. He never ended up coming back. Instead, his parents came into the classroom and grabbed his stuff. I didn't even realize what had happened until the next day when some of the other teachers told me. Apparently, the kid got expelled almost immediately after he walked into the office. Needless to say, kids, don't sell adult entertainment at school. I had to say, well, yeah, the kid shouldn't have been selling that stuff at school and shouldn't have had it or whatever. I feel like getting expelled from school for that seems a little bit extreme. Like, sure, you know, punish the kid or whatever, detention or whatnot, but expelling a kid for that? I don't know. That seems like a lot. Story 3. I work in an elementary school, and we had one student who was expelled the first day. He was one of my students, so I was witness to most of what happened. The day started with him being disruptive. He wouldn't stop talking. I put him in timeout and went back to teaching. After a few minutes, one of my other students started yelling that he was peeing in the corner. I told him to stop and go to the bathroom. He just ignored me and sat in the timeout chair. I went over to the phone to call the principal to come get him. While my back was turned, he got up and grabbed a girl and tried to drag her over to where he had just peed. She started screaming and crying. I separated them quickly. Thankfully, the principal came in shortly after and took the kid to the office. I found out later that he had only gotten worse once he was in the office. He peed on the principal's desk, he took off all his clothes and tried to rub himself against the secretary's leg, he bit the vice principal when she pulled him off the secretary, he bit her hard enough to draw blood. He was expelled that day. I found out later that the kid had a mental breakdown because his mother had died in front of him. I mean, in this instance, I feel terrible for the kid because this kid had clearly gone through some trauma. I guess they don't say how recently the mother died in front of him, but that's extraordinarily traumatic. And to send a kid back to school after experiencing stuff like that, I just, I really hope that he got the help that he needs because I just, my heart's breaking for him. Story four. So I've been a teacher for only about three years at this point, but in my first ever year of teaching on the first day, I met possibly the worst student in existence. I'll go ahead and call him Bradley for this story. So Bradley walked into class on the first day of school, and just by looking at him, I knew he was going to cause trouble. He seemed like a kid who was trying way too hard to be cool and uninterested, to the point where it was obvious to everyone he was just posing. He picked a desk in the very back of the class, leaned back in his chair, and placed his feet on the desk. He then pulled out a massive speaker and started to play death metal on the highest volume. I really don't know what he was trying to accomplish with this. Anyways, I made my way over to him and I had to yell at him to shut it off so that he could hear me over the music. 
He just gave me a smirk like he was trying to be one of those cool kids in movies, before turning it off and closing his eyes as if he was going to try and fall asleep in his chair. I just sighed and walked back to my desk where I waited for the bell to ring so I could begin class. The bell eventually did ring and students settled into their desks. I stood up and introduced myself before jumping right into the first lesson. As I was writing on the whiteboard behind me, I could hear some sort of hissing noise, but I ignored it, figuring it was a radiator or something. But it kept going, so I turned around to see Bradley spray painting on the wall behind him. I walked over to him, snatching the spray paint out of his hand before pulling him outside with me. I had a heated discussion with him where I asked why he did this, did he really think he could get away with it, etc, etc. He just stared at me with a smirk the entire time. I grabbed him by the hand and began to pull him down to the principal's office. As we got closer and closer, I could see his composure beginning to break. Once I finally got him inside of the principal's office, his cool guy facade had broken and there were tears streaming down his face. He ended up getting expelled rather quickly, as this apparently wasn't the first time he had done something remarkably dumb like this. Sometimes I wonder what happened to him. Story 5. I'm not a teacher in this scenario, I'm one of the students who saw it happen though. So, this happened in 8th grade, I think. It might be grade 9 though, my memories are a little fuzzy. It was the very first day of school and I was in science class waiting for it to start. The bell rang and the teacher began to introduce himself and whatever when suddenly the door burst open and a girl ran in screaming about something unintelligible. The teacher ran over to her and began to calm her down while asking what happened. She managed to sob out the words, man with a knife, before she went back to crying. The teacher immediately ran out the door, calling for a lockdown and all that. As soon as he had left, everybody began to freak out and start hiding, screaming for help and whatnot. The girl who had originally been crying began to laugh, telling everybody it was just a prank. Obviously, nobody thought that it was funny, and we all began to yell at her while she just kept laughing. The teacher came back, and we all told him what had happened. He obviously didn't think it was funny either, and he called the principal over. He took the girl to his office, and we could hear him yelling at her from across the school. Needless to say, she didn't come back. <sighs> I don't know when this happened, but folks, I think we all know that in this day and age, especially here in America, with school shootings and attacks becoming so tragically commonplace, this is not the kind of thing to make a prank or joke about that's, you know, gonna be traumatic for some people to hear. That's, however funny you might think it be, or, you know, ooh, so edgy to, don't, don't, because you're gonna get expelled or worse. God. Story 6. One year I was teaching my 5th grade math class when a new student came in, which I thought was weird because I wasn't told that I was supposed to have a new student. He introduced himself as being Javier, and I told him to find a seat while I called the principal to ask if I was supposed to be getting a new student. As soon as I said the word principal, though, the kid freaked out. He began jumping on chairs and desks, screaming something like, No principal! No principal! I immediately got the principal on the phone and yelled at him to come to my classroom to help with this kid. I put the phone down and began to walk towards him slowly, talking to him in a soothing voice, hoping it would calm him down. That just seemed to make him angrier because he began to pick up anything he could find and throw it at me, still screaming no principle. I was getting sick of being assaulted with pencils and pens, so I did something pretty unprofessional and ran towards the kid and picked him up before hanging him over my shoulder so he couldn't keep throwing things. The principal arrived, and as soon as he saw who I was carrying, he had a look of shock on his face. He came over to me and asked me to put him down, so I did. He grabbed onto the kid's arms to keep him from running away, and I explained to him what happened. He sighed and explained that Javier was his son, and he wasn't even supposed to be in my class. Apparently Javier and the principal had gotten into a fight that morning, and Javier had been acting out, which explained why he kept saying no principal. The principal took Javier back to his office, and I didn't see Javier for the rest of the year. I'm not too sure what happened with him, honestly. What is the best witty comeback you've ever witnessed? Story 1. In high school, there was a jerk who was a local star athlete and was pretty much the high school cool athlete bully stereotype. His attempts to pick on people were pretty lame, but people always laughed at them because he was cool and you always laugh at what the cool kid says. He liked to do the an 80-year-old woman called, she wants her upper back strength back type jokes. 
What? He also wanted to go to Cornell on a wrestling scholarship. Not only didn't he get the scholarship, he also didn't get accepted to Cornell. One day, when he was in the middle of one of his so-and-so called routines, I said, hey, Cornell called. Oh wait, never mind. No, they didn't. <laughs> Actually, I didn't think of that until the next day, and it's one of life's greatest regrets. The jerk store called. I mean... The best comebacks are unfortunately the ones that you will think of like an hour to a day later. But keep that tucked in your back pocket because if that person ever starts doing a joke like that again, now you've got it prepped and can just whip it out like you thought, up, thought it up at the top of your head and boom, now you're the cool person. You're the king. You've got the wrestling scholarship. That's how it works. Story two. My mom's dad had passed away a couple of days previously. The night before the funeral, a dark and stormy night, the funeral home called at 9 p.m. to tell my mom she had forgotten a tie for the suit for tomorrow's showing. She freaked out, realizing she would have to drive over to the nursing home to fetch a tie and then drive to the funeral home. Dad, who loved himself his clip-on ties and had many of them, said, Oh, don't go doing that trip on a night like tonight and at this time of night. Just grab one of my clip-on ties and take it with you in the morning. My mom, who actually hated that my dad had never learned to tie a tie, responded without missing a beat, My father wouldn't be caught dead wearing a clip-on tie. Seconds after, she realized what she had said. She burst into tears. Savaged from beyond the grave. Ooh! I, I don't fully get the wolf howl in that comment, but <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I can see why she burst into tears, but I, I hope that she could get some enjoyment after that, because, uh, you know, around funerals and stuff like that, sometimes you need to be able to have a good laugh, as dour as they are, so uh, I, ho I hope that's a memory that you can all share with uh, a little bit of a macabre smirk. Story 3. Back in 10th grade, we had a long-term substitute physics teacher, a younger guy, so the tough guy in class wanted to have a dong measuring contest with him, like, daily. They constantly made fun of him and joked about his wife. One day, I didn't hear the start of it, but one kid said something like, I'd bury my face in your wife's boobs. Teacher had obviously had enough and said, No, the only Ds you're ever going to see are your grades. The class exploded. Nobody ever told on the teacher for saying that, and the guys stopped messing with him. Story 4. The class clown of my classmates, let's call him K, was known notoriously for peeing off teachers with crude, obscene, and insulting jokes. Well, one day K decides to ask a 30-something-year-old teacher, Miss Ever Had a Baby, in which the teacher replied with a simple no, but that's not where it ends. Kay then said to the teacher with a face that only appears on the stupidest of people, well, I could give you one, which caused a few snickers in class. The corners of the teacher's mouth curled into a smile, and with grace, she walked to her desk and said, no, Kay, I don't want to adopt you, which caused the whole class to erupt into laughter, and Kay shut up for the rest of that year in English. This is still one of the best comebacks I've ever heard. So simple, yet so powerful. Oh, you might have been able to get away with that in math class, maybe in history, but that kid had no chance against someone who had a far better grasp of the English language. Story 5. I miss my late uncle. He was the wittiest mother effer I ever knew. Not a joke teller, just had great one-line comebacks that were never mean, just funny. My favorite was when he went out to eat dinner with my aunt, his wife, and my mom. Just the three of them. The waitress said to them, Lucky you get to eat with two ladies. My uncle replied, Yes, but can you hurry it up? I have to get home to my wife. Story 6. Me and a buddy were at GameStop just browsing and hanging out. Employee comes up to us and asks if we need help finding anything. We told him we were just looking. This was right after the Nintendo DS XL just came out, and he started trying to sell us on it. Me, never having been a handheld gamer, told him I wasn't really interested. He decided his ace in the hole would be touting the newer, bigger 4-inch screen. Having enough, I responded, take it from me, 4 inches isn't that impressive. That was the end of his sales pitch. If you're a guy, this is a great self-roast. If you're a girl, this is just a great roast in general. Oh, I, I mean... It's simple. It doesn't seem all that creative to take, you know, someone mentioning four inches and turning into this. But I don't know. That delivery, I can hear it in my head. I can just... I love it. That's perfect. Simple. Classic. Well done. 
Story 7. I had a supervisor who was making fun of a guy's last name. The guy took it and didn't really say anything. When he was done, the supervisor asked him to email something, and the guy wanted to clarify the spelling of the supervisor's last name, which was Windsor. He said, your name doesn't have a D in it, right? The supervisor said no. So the guy said, okay, so just douchebag then, and walked away. Story 8. Jimmy Carr was at another comedian's show and he started laughing. If you've seen him, you'll know how distracting that would be. The guy on stage can't remember who it was brutally savaged him with, Jimmy, when I come to your shows, I don't laugh at your jokes. Story 9. I was 13 in dance class with some older catty girls. One of them was picking on me, which ended with her remarking, bite me. I responded with, I'm trying to cut fat from my diet. Every dance team heard it and proceeded to chastise me for being so mean. Served her right, the cow. Story 10. Comedian. I remember the first time I had intercourse. Girl in the audience. Yesterday? Audience laughs. Comedian. I'm glad you remember. Audience screaming. Story 11. I remember some guy on here a couple of years ago in one of these types of threads talking about his encounter he had in a grocery store. He was behind this woman who was giving the cashier a bunch of crap over something. She was being a real chump. Finally, sick of her attitude, he tells her to listen up and stop holding up the line. He's getting kind of peed that she's double-barreling this kid who's done nothing wrong. So she whips around on him and says, This is none of your dang business. And he responds, Listen, lady, I'm a veterinarian. Bees are my business. I don't know if that story's true. Don't care. I thought it was amazing. Story 12. Guy in grade school was really into war history and building army models, fighter jets, aircraft carriers, etc. He was quiet and smart, but handsome and part of the main crowd. Athletic, etc., but very much a history-slash-war buff. At a party, for whatever reason, he was in a kind of argument beef with one of the hotter and more popular girls in class. The greatest comeback I've ever heard was as follows. Girl. Whatever, Dan, why don't you go play with your model planes? Guy, immediately, without missing a beat. Great idea. I can land them on your flat chest. The reaction from the crowd added insult to injury as people went bonkers like it was a walk-off home run in a playoff baseball game. Never have I heard a better comeback, real or scripted, ever since. During middle school math class, one of the boys, overweight, was being made fun of by this petite girl. You should put on a bra. You need it. You should take off your bra. You don't need it. The class went, oh, and the guy got a few fist bumps. She cried. I don't like these ones where, I mean, yeah, someone makes fun of your physical appearance, but then responding with making fun of their physical appearance and stuff, I just... Come on, folks. You can be more creative than that. It just, nah. I don't know. I feel like we're past that this day and age. But, eh, maybe it's just me. Because I look <laughs> amazing. Who could possibly make fun of me and my thinning hair and all? Oh, God. <laughs> Story 13. My grandfather died quite a bit before his time, and my grandmother would get a lot of calls for him. One telemarketing firm was particularly pushy, and one day an unbelievably condescending salesperson called and demanded to speak to the man of the household. My grandmother, who was normally restrained to a fault, replied, Well, as soon as he comes back from the dead, I'll have him give you a call, and slammed the phone. They actually did stop calling after that. Story 14. A student told another that he wasn't the sharpest crayon in the box. He responded, you're the sharpest because no one wants to work with you. Story 15. Before you read on, please know that my relationship with my 14-year-old son is built on giving each other a hard time. I said a bad word, don't remember which one or why. You're a horrible mother. TF, I'm so horrible, how did you turn out so awesome? I spend a lot of time with dad. Wrecked. Story 16. Shakespeare's plays are full of them. Ajax, I shall cut out your tongue. Thersites, tis no matter, I shall speak as much as thou afterwards. Hamlet, oh frick. No, seriously, folks, get into Shakespeare. As a former English major, uh, drop out. Um, I gotta tell you, Shakespeare had some zingers. Shakespeare was a clever and fairly crude mother effer. Uh... <laughs> His plays were made for the people. They're great. Get into that stuff. You're going to find some, some wonderful things. And if you don't think that you will, well, then I bite my thumb at you, sir.
Story 17. Had a really witty teacher for my game design class. The vice principal hated him for whatever reason. One day we were all studiously working with our headphones on, programming away while our teacher was up front reading a book, very available and approachable if we had any questions. Then the VP walks in the room. VP. Mr. Teacher, it's come to my attention that you have absolutely no control over this class. This is unacceptable. Teacher gives him a fairly nonchalant stare, coolly and calmly places his book down, and claps his hands loudly three times, which was his very effective way of getting our attention while listening to music. Mind you, the following occurred without us knowing why the VP was there or what he had said. Teacher. Okay, class, listen up. I have an exercise for you. This will only take a few moments. First and foremost, everybody stands up. We all stood up in near unison very quickly. Teacher. Good. Now I want all of you to leave the room and stand outside in the hallway, and no matter what this guy says, as he points his finger at VP, do not come back in the room until I say so. Okay. Go. We all exit the room, a little intrigued by what was going on. Teacher. Okay, VP. Bring them back in the classroom. We didn't budge. To this day, this is one of my favorite stories to tell. Story 18. When I was in high school, this very large overweight kid who always picked on me waited till things got quiet in the classroom and said, Whoa, Mugerson eats dongs. Everyone laughed and I got embarrassed and nervous and a few seconds later after people finished laughing, I stuttered out, Yeah, well you eat everything. I don't know where that came from, but holy crap, the entire room lost it. <laughs> Laugh my butt off, this sounds like the goofiest, genuine comeback in this thread. Amazing. What's a secret that you've been holding in that you know would ruin friendships if someone found out? Story 1. My friend's parents got divorced because I was sleeping with both of them. Edit. I will put this here because so many people have been asking for it. It is intentionally vague to protect the guilty. Had to go out of town for a conference while in college. Decided to find a hookup. Found this guy who looked really good despite being in his late 30s. After talking to him, I found out he was married, which was fine by me, being that I was in a selfish phase. It pretty much guaranteed no strings attached. On another side, I found a woman who was about the same age and also pretty damned attractive in spite of it, who said she thought her husband was cheating on her and she was going to sleep around. Now, at that time, I was just trying to be uh, as effed up as possible. I'm thinking, how funny would it be if the two of them were married? So I arranged to meet them on different nights while the conference was going on. I ended hooking up with both of them and patted myself on the back for being such a dirty heathen. Towards the end of the semester, one of the guys I hung out with was really bummed out, and when I asked why, I found out it was because his parents had told him they were getting divorced. I did the whole sympathetic thing and told him he would feel better soon. End of spring semester, I agreed to help him pack up his apartment. His dad shows up with a small U-Haul. Talk about the most awkward thing ever. At this point, I decided to snoop on his Facebook to see if I can find a picture of his mom. It couldn't have been her, could it? It was. So there's a story. It probably wasn't entirely my fault, but I certainly didn't help things. So, I mean, I'm not going to say that what you did was, you know, ethical, moral, whatever. Um, I don't think it was your fault. Clearly, there was already, you know, problems in that marriage. And I don't think that they were going to last or, you know, maybe shouldn't have if they were both so willing and eager to go out and cheat. So, uh yeah, but, uh, yeah, probably best not to share that little tidbit with your friend. Story 2. My husband's friend, who is married, tries to corner me alone every time we see them. I'm afraid of him. Edit. Thanks for the support. I'm going to tell my husband. I honestly didn't think of any danger other than he may grope me, but you are all right. He has physically prevented me from getting away from him and laughed while doing it. 1 a.m., not going to worry about their friendship or this guy's wife. If she is in trouble with him, she knows where I am. Edit 2 for update. So, as not to lose my nerve, I told my husband today after work. At first he said, oh, he was just messing around. But when I gave him details, he said no one would treat me like that and he would deal with it. I got him to cool down a little and asked him not to get into a fight, and he went over to the guy's house. Husband's report to me was that guy tried to play it off, that I was overreacting, he must have been drinking. Then he said that I must have been coming on to him. That's when husband hit him. There was no fight, it was one punch, and guy was down. Husband told me he was done with guy and he has orders to never be around me again. 
In the many years we've been married, I've never seen husband get physical. Apparently, he's good at it. Ice has been on his hand pretty much all night, and no police have come to the door. I've decided if anyone asks what the problem is with the two men, I'll tell them the truth. I may not be the only one. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, no, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I'm known for not being one to go like, yeah, physical violence, but, uh, I, I definitely think you did the right thing by telling someone, and, yeah, even if nothing had happened, it sounds like the extent that he was going to, you needed to be concerned, and I'm glad that you were, and, uh, I hope things all turn out for the best. Except for that guy. Story three. My mother found her husband's brother dead one morning. She had to call 911, keep her husband from completely losing it, call his mother, call 911 again because his mother started hyperventilating while driving and needed oxygen, and kept the brother's crazy ex-girlfriend from going in the house. They said it looked like he had a heart attack, but asked who to contact when they had a definite answer. My mom was the only one emotionally competent enough at the time to understand what was going on, so she volunteered. He had been an H addict for years, but after a serious accident, he detoxed and was almost a year clean. The cause of death was overdose. My mother went to his apartment, rummaged through the entire thing, and found all his needles, etc., and tossed them before anyone found them while cleaning things out. He had been ostracized from the family for years. Everyone was so happy to have him back and healthy. My mom couldn't bear to tell them what really happened. She told me years after. I'm still the only other person who knows. Story 4. Abstract. A friend of mine fakes being British. I've known this guy for years and we met while working for the same company. It all started as a joke during our training class for work. He asked me not to say anything and to play along. I obliged, thinking it would be fun to mess with people. The problem is, we met some really cool people that would later become some of our closest friends. He was so deep into his British persona, he couldn't risk breaking character. What's worse, he started to buy his own cover and even went as far as to get English-related tattoos. Best moment ever was when he met a real Brit, and I watched him sweat himself into a babbling river of bullcrap. So, when I was younger... <laughs> I used to fake accents sometimes, not terribly often, but I do know when I was, uh, I think, 16 or 17, I was uh, visiting the Twin Cities here in Minnesota from uh, my home way up north, and uh, I needed to like get on a bus and everything, and so to talk to a lady to figure out the bus system, I pretended to be Australian. And then she just so happened to be getting on the same bus. And as we got in and sat down, she saw friends on the bus and told them, Ooh, he's from Australia. And they all started asking me questions about Australia. And I'm sitting there like, oh, yeah, mate. That's a pretty great place and everything, you know. All of our ways outside of Perth. You familiar with Perth? Oh, no, you're not. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Story 5. Several friends of mine have cheated on their significant others of long-term relationships. Effing pees me off to see them so happy together, me knowing what happened, and me who has never cheated on anyone in my life sitting there single as the third wheel most of the time. Alas, the double-edged sword is if I ever said anything, I'd lose both as friends, so I just keep my mouth shut. Story 6. That GMO labeling bill they're having an AMA about right now? My friend helped get it passed. She worked incredibly hard on it for months. We're talking 70 to 80 hours a week, and she obviously believes passionately in it. I think GMOs are perfectly safe and necessary to continue increasing food production as the population expands. More practically, I think all the money they spent getting it passed and the millions of dollars the state of Vermont is going to wind up paying in legal fees defending it would be better used pretty much anywhere else. I also don't think it has a snowball's chance in hell of actually being upheld. I just smile and nod whenever she talks about it. Story 7 I lied to my friend about a tattoo he has. Back when I was in college, I met this guy at a party who really wanted to tattoo Asian words on his arm. Knowing that I'm Asian, Chinese, he asked me to pick the words for him. We were both a little drunk, so I gave him the words, I am chicken in Chinese. The character chicken also stands for hooker in Chinese. I told him it means the true ancient warrior in Chinese. He believed me and tattooed it on his arms. I haven't talked to him after college. Not sure if he figured it out yet. 
Folks, I'm just going to tell you that if you're going to get a tattoo that's in a different language, you should be able to at least partially speak that language. Don't just get a tattoo in a foreign, you know, foreign language and a foreign script because you think it's neat. Know it. Have it be meaningful to you in some way. I mean, it's your body. Get whatever tattoo you want. I'm not the king of tattoos. I got one tattoo right here. And oh, would you all like to see? I did just a little. Oh, 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 oh. Hmm. May maybe I'll show you all if we get to half a million subscribers or something. I don't know. <laughs> Story eight. My high school crush had her boyfriend and my name right next to each other in her phone and would often text me naked pictures of herself and wouldn't notice until I said something back to her. By the time she finally learned, I had about 30 to 40 pictures of her. We were really close friends, so we were able to laugh about it in private, but that would ruin the relationship if he knew she did that multiple times. Story 9. My best friend's girlfriend has a penis. I don't know the specifics, but she is something like one in a half million people have both sets of genitalia. She takes hormones to keep being essentially female, so it's largely useless and just kind of hangs there. I put my mouth on it once, not sure if I'm proud of that. Anyway, it's a secret because his parents are very, uh, let's say, conservative, and nearly kicked him out at 15 because they suspected he was gay. He wasn't gay, he just wore nice shirts. Anyway, he's 20 now, so it's less of a risk to let this information out, but they might not let him go home from uni for summer if they were to know this fact. Story 10 as the username implies, I have a omorashi fetish and have had it for as long as I can remember. For those who don't know, omorashi is a fetish with a variety of focuses. However, the most basic definition is that omorashi is when you get aroused either by you or another individual experiencing a full bladder and becoming desperate before eventually wetting themselves. A lot of people tend to confuse omarashi with golden showers or ABDL, however, omarashi is quite different. For example, nudity and physical contact are not typical in omarashi content. Often models are fully clothed, and the best content features either real individuals or actors' actresses who are caught in a very desperate and public situation where they need to pee but for some reason are not able to. Eventually, the individual ends up having an embarrassing accident in their clothing. For some people with this fetish, the pleasure can derive from the desperation, humiliation, the sight of the wet clothing, the knowledge that a wedding accident is a major taboo, or a mixture of all of these things. Story 11. I have this friend, the guy's kind of a douche. We don't really talk anymore, not even sure I still consider him a friend. Anyway, he was notorious in our friend group for trying to steal his friend's girlfriends. It wasn't that he was trying to sleep with them and run away, it was more that he would fall in love with any girl who would talk to him. He never had a girlfriend himself until he was 22. The guy was painfully shy around girls and condescending to his friends. He would often give his dating advice and relationship advice when he'd never had either. Naturally, when one of us would get a girlfriend, he would have to interact with them and would very quickly fall in love. This led to him doing some pretty scummy things like tricking partners into dates and even going as far as to phone my friend's girlfriend up and tell her that he loved her for who she really was and not just her body like my friend did. He did eventually get his own girlfriend that he never stole from anyone. She was an American girl who was only going to be in the country for like three more months. He became a huge butthole during this time, talking about how none of us knew what real love was and how he was the only guy she ever wanted. The secret I've been keeping is that the very same girl he bragged about nonstop asked me out three times and I turned her away because I didn't want to get into a relationship with someone who was leaving. She told me she'd date one of my friends as revenge. Still, to this day, I have not told him. Although, seeing the written down, I don't know why the guy's a D. Yeah, I gotta say, you're like, still to this day, I haven't told him. And I'm like, why? The guy sounds like the worst. <laughs> I mean, I guess I get it. Even with people that I am just not a fan of at all, I still won't go out of my way to try and make them, like, feel crappy about stuff. I just don't talk to them, so... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, unless you're still, like, actively hanging out with this person frequently and still don't like them, then just stop doing that, maybe. You woke me up for that? 
Story one, my girlfriend punched me in the face. According to her, she just woke up from a dream, but was still in one of those weird half-conscious, half-dreaming states where she didn't really know where she was or what was going on. She said she looked beside her in bed and saw some dark mass laying there that made her uncomfortable. So after watching it for a moment, she attacked it. Ended up decking me square in the nose, hard. Somehow I instantly knew what happened. I shot up and yelled, babe, what the frick? She mumbled some half-asleep apology, immediately rolled over, and went back to sleep. I, on the other hand, laid there unable to go back to sleep for two more hours because it's not exactly easy to do when you're woken like that. I was furious. It's one of my favorite stories about her slash us now. You know, I've had a partner, like, startle me awake a little bit by, like, saying something or, like like tapping me or something once when they were asleep, but to get fully decked <laughs> would be startling to say the least. And the fact that you were kind enough to let her go back to sleep and not be like, uh-uh, what just happened here? You get to be awake too and help me with this. Like, good on you. That's pretty compassionate. <laughs> Story two. My roommate. I love her so much. Put an old potato in the microwave for five minutes. We don't know if it's because she didn't poke it with holes or if, or because if it was old or if five minutes is too long for a raw potato, but we had a food flare up. I woke up because a fire alarm was going off and I peeked my head out and there's a small fire in the microwave. I blasted it with water from a spray bottle until it stopped glowing and we threw out the melted plate and blew the smoke out the windows and we laughed about it for like an hour. It was such a stupid situation. Who lights a fire in a microwave? Who fricks up baking a potato? Who's baking potatoes after midnight anyway? Why was it so funny to hold a melted plate in the middle of the night? It's actually one of my favorite college memories so far. As someone who once set a sweet potato on fire in the microwave, it pleases me to know I'm not the only one who makes this mistake. I mean, first off, who microwaves, uh, who bakes a potato after midnight? Someone who's high <laughs> and really wants a baked potato, that's who. <laughs> <laughs> Second, how do the plate melt? Do they make plastic plates? Because m every microwave I've had, that little bottom plate is like glass. Oh, the, maybe the plate that the potato was on. Ah, uh, I'm piecing it together now. Everything's coming together. Story three. I was having a nap one day, I very rarely nap, and a friend of mine who lives halfway across town charges into my room and screams, Do you have a phone book? I was so dazed and confused that I didn't even consider asking why and just gave him the book. Years later at his wedding, I gave him a phone book of my new town. I will never forget the nap that got away. Story 4 I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, especially after a night of drinking. One Saturday morning when I was in college, I slept through a fire alarm. I woke up when a security officer entered my room and started yelling at me, Hey, why are you still here? Didn't you hear the alarm? I was still in my bed at that point, and I just looked at him and said, I didn't hear it. I was sleeping. He then tells me that the fire alarm was set off in my room and starts rattling off questions. Were you smoking? Microwaving? Toasting? Lighting incense? I told him, No, dude. I just told you I was sleeping. You literally just woke me up. I could tell he was getting a bit frustrated, but so was I. He then tells me, Get up, you need to go outside with the others. I responded, well, can I at least get dressed? I'm not wearing boxers. After that, he finally left, and I put on some underwear and my robe and went outside. It turned out my smoke alarm was defective, which is why it set off the system and why I couldn't hear it as loudly as everyone else. It wasn't necessarily a stupid reason to wake me up, but at the time, I was super annoyed because it sucked to wake up to a security guard yelling at you early in the morning. Story 5 I kid you not with this story. So, my linear algebra professor decided to test us to see if we're truly learning the material in class. So he says, Your cell numbers are in the school system, so I'm going to call each and every one of you at random one time during the quarter. I'm going to ask a linear algebra question, and you have to answer it, or else you lose five points. I thought it was weird, but we decided to go along with it. Three quarters of the way through the quarter, I completely forgot about it, and at like three in the morning, my phone goes off. I wake up and answer it. Hey, it's your math professor here. Here's your question. How many vectors does it take to form a basis in R4, and what are the conditions needed to form it? I paused for a second, and I just said, no, I'm not doing this, and hung up. The next day, I talked to him after class, and he said, if you truly knew the material, you'd know it in your sleep. 
I lost five points, but I didn't care. That was the dumbest thing to do to wake a person up. I don't know my own name when I wake up from a deep sleep, much less linear fricking algebra. I'm not joking when I say that I would have reported that algebra professor to th someone, whoever you report professors to, because that's bull. I am the same way. If you woke me up, if you manage to wake me up with a phone call at 3 a.m., I would not be coherent and I would not be ready to do that stuff. That teacher deserves a swift kick in the butt because that's ridiculous. Story 6. I speak Spanish, but the rest of my family doesn't. One Saturday morning, my dad was having a garage sale and woke me up at 7 a.m. to translate for some guy who didn't speak English and wanted to negotiate prices. So I dragged myself out of bed, I had a really late night the night before and was a little hungover, and went to talk to this guy about a punching bag. I was talking to him for about five minutes before I realized that he was speaking Portuguese and that I was having a one-sided conversation with myself, and neither of us could actually understand the other. Story 7. Being woken up to be told, I'm going out. I would have gathered that by waking up and noticing that you weren't home. I would assume, oh, she went out. This happens to me all the time. I get woken up by someone yelling, Bye, Alexoria, I'm going to the dentist or mall or work. Like, thanks, if only I could have figured that out myself. Sorry, I'm a bit bitter about this. Story 8. Coworker called me at 1.30 a.m. to call out for the following day. Coworker, not an employee, and because of a sore throat. That crap happened to me, too. Hey, I'm going to be out tomorrow. Can you tell the boss? Can't you call her in the morning? Nope, I'm going to be busy. It's literally just, hey, I won't be there. Okay, have a good day. Story 9. My dad, I think he has been smoking pot, but anywho, he woke me up at 3 a.m. in my senior year of high school to see if I wanted to drive him to Walmart so that he could buy tan mini blinds for the dining room. He handed me a piece of paper that he had supposedly written down the measurements of the window, but it was just a list of candy. Sounds to me like your dad had a pretty important grocery list, and if you wanted to be a good kid, you would have got him over to Walmart so he could get those blinds and all that delicious candy. Story 10. My mom woke me up at 7 a.m. on a Sunday when I was 15 to tell me that Princess Diana had died. I was annoyed, and so I just said, good, and went back to sleep. I was 18, and my mom woke me up at 7 a.m. to tell me that, too. I asked if Dodie was with her and apparently nodded in approval when this was confirmed and rolled over. Story 11. My friend calls me. Hey, can I borrow Smash Brothers Melee? I would be grateful, man. Dude, it's 3.30 a.m. Frickin' wait until the sun is out. Dude took my word seriously. Hey, the sun is out. Now can I get the game? Ugh, sure. Sorry, everyone. The tournament is delayed until sunrise because someone was being a dong. Well, mate, you should have your own copy of the game if you're going to host a tournament, Steve. Pee off, Jerry. Story 12. A couple of nights ago, my husband flipped the light on in the middle of the night because he was looking for spiders hanging from the ceiling while he was dreaming. Twice. Two hours apart. Hey, spiders can be scary. Ouch. That's bitter and epic at the same time. Story 13. This will get buried, but I wanted to share. I was on a cruise with some friends and sharing a room with two other girls. One of the girls woke me up at 5.30 a.m. so we could go see the sunrise. Now, for some context, not three years before this, I finished my four-year contract with the U.S. Navy where I was stationed on an aircraft carrier in the Gulf, and for most of that time, I worked night check, the night shift, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. on deployment. Not only did this girl know that, but on at least 10 occasions, I told her the story of getting off work to head out to the fantail and watch the sunrise over the ocean before heading to bed for the night. Also, for some extra context, I am not a morning person. If I don't have to wake up early and I am woken up early, I turn into a grumpy bee. So when she woke me up, I rolled over, glared at her and said, really? And rolled back over to go to sleep. But redshirt decoy, it's the sunrise on the ocean. You have to experience this. M, if I had a dollar for every time I saw the sunrise on the ocean, I would have enough money to pay someone to throw you overboard for waking me up. Now leave me alone. I'm on vacation and I'm frigging going back to bed. This is the same woman who used to complain because she heard the sunrise story so many times before this cruise, yet conveniently forgot at 5.30 a.m. on frickin' vacation.
First off, folks, can we just stop starting off these posts saying, this will get buried, but I wanted to share. Like, have some confidence. Get out there and just put your best foot forward. Don't don't be all like, no one's going to read it. We're reading it. It's right here, right now. We believe in you. Second, maybe, maybe your wife or girlfriend or whatever it was just wanted to actually be there and share that moment with you. Maybe they did remember about you talking about all those sunrises and they kept dreaming about i wish i'd been there with them that sounds so beautiful and stuff and wanted to share a moment with her partner so get out of bed and go see a sunrise and then get a nice early morning bloody mary and have enjoy your vacation yeah grouch story 14 my roommate and her boyfriend snuck in at 6 a.m. and tried to quietly have intercourse while I was sleeping in the other bed two feet away. Wow, frick that guy, if he's cool with that. Story 15. My mom very excitedly woke me up to show me a recently dead bird that she had seen fly into the window. I told her that she wasn't a cat, and as such, this behavior was unacceptable. Story 16. During college, some drunk jackbutt tried and failed to cook grilled cheese at 2.30 in the morning. Set off the fire alarm for an eight-floor dorm. The campus police officer who showed up to help clear the scene stood on top of his cruiser and yelled, Who the frick burns grilled cheese at 2 a.m.? Dang, that officer must have been green. Story 17. Because my mom wants me to be awake. She doesn't have anything she wants me to do. She just doesn't want me sleeping if the sun is out. Most fun things for teenagers happen at around midnight. Wake her up then so she doesn't miss out. Story 18. My manager once called me at 6 a.m. to ask if I saw his email he sent an hour before about shirt sizes for the new uniforms. I thought that calling you about an email they just sent you was a thing that happened right after email became an enterprise thing and it didn't happen anymore. Nope, at least once a week I get a call 30 seconds after I receive an email. Don't answer the phone if your managers are calling you at 6 a.m. Absolutely not. They could send a text or leave a message or something. That's ridiculous. And managers, ooh, if you do this, bad karma or something. Or, you know, just an enraged employee decking you one day. Don't, don't do this. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.